All right, so do this one on your own. Uh, this one's a little bit different. So instead of saying that no matter what x is, y is always 5, like over here, now we're saying it doesn't matter what the y is, no matter what you choose for y, whoops, and I've written this wrong, no matter what you choose for y, x is always going to be 2. So uh, create a table of values and then see what you get over here. So pause the video here and try this yourself. Okay, so uh, here you should have gotten, uh, you always have to choose 2 for x because x is always going to be 2, that's what it's saying. And for y, let's just choose our standards. Let's just say, um, well, we'll change it up. Let's, let's start with negative 5. Uh, we'll say negative 2, and we'll go up by 3. So this is going to be uh, 1, and this will be 4 and then this will be uh, 7, even though we won't be able to graph this because it's off It's off my plot. Uh, so we have x is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 5. So let's try that. x is equal to 2 and y is negative 5. There we go. Uh, when, y, when x is 2, y is negative 2. So x is 2, y is negative 2. Uh, x is 2, y is 1 x is 2, y is 4, and then x is 2, y is 7, I can't really put it on there. But you can see already that this is clearly a linear relation. And actually, I should have done another color. And actually, this is a special type of linear relation. If you look back here, this linear relation is also a function because every single domain is only associated with one element in the range. When x is 2, uh, it's related to y, to y equal 5. So when x is 2, it's related to y5. When x is 1, it's related to y5. So each of these domains only has a single association with, with a single element in the range. And remember the last lesson we talked about uh, non-functions being ones where we have two points along the same vertical line here. And clearly we don't have that here. But in the next case, in this case, we do where x equals 2 is an element in the domain, clearly has actually an infinite number of associations with the range. So this is a linear relation, but not a linear function, whereas this is a linear function. And we'll get into that a little bit more in later lessons. All right, so let's go back to our car example. So here we have the cost of a car rental uh, in Hawaii again. So it's 60 bucks plus 20 bucks for every 100 kilometers driven. Well, uh, so here we have the table of values, which we already kind of covered, and we can represent this as a table or as a graph, and here it is. So this is our graph of, uh, of car rental, and for every 100 kilometers driven, we need to pay an extra 20 bucks. That's what it's saying. So we drive 100 kilometers, the cost goes from 60 to 80. We drive another 100 kilometers, the cost goes from 80 to 100. Uh, and this is that representation of that graph. <clears throat> and here they've actually put little arrows here to indicate the changes. So between this point and this point, uh, the independent variable has changed 100 kilometers. From this point to this point, it's changed 100 kilometers. And it's always going to change 100 kilometers because this is a linear function or a linear relation. Uh, here we have the dependent variable for every between every data point, it's increasing by $20. So here I have an increase of 20, increase of 20, increase of 20, increase of 20. And we can actually call these changes the rate of change. And let's talk about this on the next slide. So uh, here we already talked about we can use the graph to calculate the rate of change. And the rate of change is going to be uh, dollars per kilometer in this particular case. So I want to know how much it's going to cost me per kilometer driven. Uh, some of you might have done unit rates in previous math courses. Well, this is kind of what we're doing. We're, we're doing a unit rate here, or a rate of change. So we can call 
where we can define a rate of change as a fraction. And it's going to be the dependent variable or the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. I'll just fix this up here. So it's the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. So if we look here, in this case, the change in the dependent variable is 20. Because between each set of points, the cost is increasing by 20 bucks. The change in the independent variable is 100 because between each set of values or each set of points, we're increasing or we're traveling an extra 100 kilometers. So uh, rate of change is equal to the change in the dependent variable is 20, and it's actually $20, over, I'll drag this down just so you can see this, uh, over 100 kilometers. And our final step is to do that division, and when we divide 20 by 100, we actually get 0 0.20 dollars, which is essentially 20 cents per one kilometer. And this is the rate of change. So again, it's saying that for every one kilometer that we drive, that's gonna cost us an extra 20 cents. So it's 20 cents per kilometer for this rental. All right, so let's try this now. Uh, here is a, a water tank uh, in Saskatchewan. It holds 6,000 liters. Graph A represents the tank being filled at a constant rate. And if we look at this, that kind of makes sense. We have volume here uh, and time, and as time increases, the volume in liters of water is increasing. So we're going up to the right. Graph B represents the tank being emptied. Uh, and here, as time increases, so as time goes by, the volume is decreasing, so the amount of water in the tank is decreasing. So A is asking us to identify the independent and dependent variables. So you guys should be whizzes at this by now. Uh, here on the bottom is the independent variable, and here we have the dependent variable, and the same here. Dependent and independent. It makes sense that the volume is dependent on time, uh, and if you're not sure, know that the independent variable is always on the bottom. Now, determine the rate of change of each relation, then describe what it represents. Well, as we said before, the rate of change is equal to the change in the dependent variable, I'll call it the dv, over the change in the independent variable, I'll call that iv. So we need to figure out what these changes are. Well, when we want to find the changes in the independent and dependent variable, we have to choose two points. So uh, it could be really any two points. It could be these two points here, these two points here. It doesn't make a difference. It could be any two points on the line. But we have to use those same two points when we're calculating the change in the dependent and the independent variable. So uh, I'm going to just choose these points just to make things easy. Uh, so for this point here, I have a change in time. That's this much. And then I have a change in volume that's this much. So uh, my change in time is, this is going up by 20 for each line, so 20, 40, 60, 80. So this is going to be an increment of 20, 40, 60. So here I'm increasing it by 40 minutes. And here I've started at we can tell this goes 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, so I started at 1,000, ended up at 3,000, so I've increased it by 2,000 liters. So my rate of change is going to be the change in the dependent variable, which is the volume, over the change in the independent variable, which is the time. So that's going to give me uh, 2,000 liters over 40 minutes, and then uh, 
So we have 2,000 over 40. And then all we have to do is that division. And so we know that 2,000, uh, we can go really 200 divided by 40, uh, 40, 80, 160. So that's going to give us 5. And this is 2,000, so it's really going to be 50 liters per minute. Good. So rate of change here. Uh, so it's going to be the same thing. So the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. Now, this one's a little trickier. So here, as and I'll choose these two points, actually. And again, it could be any two points. I could choose this one and this one. But just to make it easy, let's choose these two points. Uh, so time is going to increase by... Let's see, so we start at 20 and we go to 40. So that's going to be an increase of 20 minutes. There. Uh, and then here the volume is actually decreasing. So this is going to be a negative change. So here we're going from 4,000 to 2,000. That's going to be a change of negative 2,000 liters. And that negative is significant. We want to make sure that's on there because that's representing that we're taking volume away. Uh, so my rate of change is going to be uh, negative 2,000 liters over 20 minutes. And so we have negative uh, 2,000 divided by 20, so that's going to give us negative, negative 100 liters per minute. And that's it. This is our rate of change for filling a tank, and this is a rate of change for empty a tank. And this is saying that for every minute that goes by, we're losing 100 liters. Here we're saying for every minute that goes by, we're gaining 50 liters. So we'll try this on your own. This is a slightly different example. So pause the video here, and when you come back, we'll, uh, we'll go through the answer. All right. There you go. So uh, now that we know how to find, how to figure out whether an equation is a linear relation, uh, I'm going to show you uh, a bit of a shortcut for finding rate of change when given an equation. So we can determine the rate of change from an equation that represents uh, the linear function. And here, this is our example of the cost of the car again. So the cost of car rental in Hawaii is 60 bucks plus $20 for every 100 kilometers driven. And if you look closely at this equation, uh, where C is the number of dollars that it's going to cost you, and D is the distance you've driven in kilometers. So remember our rate of change uh, for this example was 20 cents per kilometer. And if you look here, this number here actually represents that rate of change. So here we have the C, which is the dependent variable. We have a D, which is the independent variable. We have this 60. Now this 60 is what we start with. Uh, we need to start at 60 bucks. So this is our starting point. So this is our initial value, we'll call it. Initial value. So this is saying we start at 60 bucks for the rental plus $0.2 or 20 cents times the number of kilometers that we've driven. So when we have equations in this form, this number here is going to be the rate of change. And that's just a nifty little shortcut that might help you a little later on in the unit. And that's it.